I, I, I'm looking at this one as more of a, it's not really a woke thing. Like there's, there's, you know, She-Hulk obvious, right? <laughs> the, the MCU has gone obviously woke. I yeah. get all that. But I look at this season and it just feels unfocused and there was no real plan and they don't know what to do now that they've forced Grogu back into the thing. Yeah. yeah so yeah. they, and, and, and I think maybe Favreau is distracted with Ahsoka. I think that's his, his baby. So that's where he wants to be. And I don't know how much Dave Filoni is doing this one. I, I watched the bad batch. I just finished that one up. I kind of binge shit. And again, I know you don't like the animation style and all that, which is fair. But I really enjoyed those two seasons. It feels like a natural extension of Clone Wars or Rebels or that kind of thing. And I think it's it's a really good, interesting show on how the Imperials, the Empire, decided to forego clones in, in favor of conscription and that kind of stuff. Mm. And how they kind of treated the clones pretty shabbily after the war was over and the Empire took over. Um, so there's some interesting things going on there, and there's a lot of factions kind of working to become the dominant. Like, you're trying to get the boss's attention, and one guy's saying, I think we should have take the clone technology and do this. And another guy's saying, I think we should do the Death Star and do that. And another one's saying, I think we should do conscription and build, uh, you know, but we need, to, we need to get more Navy stuff, and we haven't gotten the funds for that. You know, well, where are you going to put the money? Which one are you going to go with? Well, we know eventually which way they go, but it's kind of like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, I kind of find that shit interesting. Um, and or uh, uh, un- underrated, but understandable why it's not really catching on either it's it's not what people are looking for in star wars even though i kind of liked it um and then the first two seasons of mandalorian you know if you look back on it i did enjoy it but they're very simple and i don't find myself watch i must admit actually that second series i haven't watched the first series again but i watched the second series a second time and it is quite decent again it is kind of all fetch and go kind of kind of things yeah. and stuff but it does it does build to something even though then it then goes off to Boba Fett and then you have to have seen Boba Fett to come back and, and just oh. which was really wow. bad Boba Fett was really bad uh, Kenobi Fett was horrendous. really bad and I just I, 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 I've been I've been listening to where they're talking about because Lucas we, we talked about this a little bit last week how Lucas film is in chaos what I'm hearing is that uh, Kathleen Kennedy has been told to fo- not only focus on Star Wars, but focus on making movies. And if you look at it, it's like, okay, well, Kevin Feige, we can, we can talk about Phase 4, all we want, how it sucks and everything else. Mm. But we did have like 21, 22 movies that all made money. From yeah. just a pure stockholder standpoint, they all made money. So you could say, well, at least we got our money's worth out of it before it turned to shit. Because, let's face it, every property eventually turns to shit. Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday 13th, Police Academy, we could go on and on. Scream. Right? <laughs> Scream. The, the first <laughs> Superman movies, the the first set of Batman movies, you know. There is nothing great, wrong with Superman 4, how dare you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nothing wrong with it, except everything. Um... <laughs> But, you know, it's all about stockholder money. Well, they've never gotten their money out of Star Wars. They paid $4 billion for it. And oh, yeah, what have they gotten out of it? They certainly didn't get it out of Willow. They're not going to get it out of Indiana Jones. They're not going to get... Uh, I, I guess if Indiana Jones doesn't make $900 million or somewhere around there, uh, that will be the end of Kathleen Kennedy for sure. So... She and Lucasfilm in general is being said, you need to make Star Wars. You need to make better quality and less quantity. And really, if you look at since they've bought it, what have they had that has that, that like I would go back and watch phases one through three of the MCU. Yes. You know, I, have, I have two or three times. Yeah. 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 You could say, well, Force Awakens made piles of money. It's the best. It's it's the highest grossing movie ever. Yeah, on the promise of extending a story that it that it stands on the shoulders of 
the first three Star Wars movies, right? Not the prequels, not anything else. The first three Star Wars movies. It was bringing yeah. back Han, Leia, and Luke uh, onto the screen. Never bringing them back get, together. Yeah, yeah. We didn't get what we what we hoped for, but we didn't know that in 2015. We went on the promise that that's what's going to happen. Then you have these one-off stories trying to build the Star Wars cinematic universe. So you have Rogue One, which was, I I mean, it's it's okay. But I don't think it's... It's not one that I go back to. It's, uh, God, you know what? I've seen people defending it and saying how it's easy, the best of the Star Wars movies and everything else. And it's like, it's the best of the Disney movies, but that's not saying much. No, it's you know, not. That's, that's, because it's, you know, that's, that's, that's not a high bar to reach, you know, with th- that. Those characters are not compelling. They're not compelling. No. And you know, you know what happens to them. So what's the point, <laughs> ultimately? Well, I, I could deal with them all... <laughs> perishing at the end i don't think it's a bad way to go or anything I, I don't i don't disagree with the ending i'm just saying the characters just weren't compelling they didn't have they were flat lines throughout the entire the only one mm. you remember is k2so who actually injected an opinion and, and through his humor created a bit of conflict guy played a cassian and and the girl jen or so i forget her name but yeah. they just yeah. they were just so they're planks of wood and they don't have any moments in there that kind of help you latch on to them as uh, onto their personalities so the only thing you really has going in rogue one is that ending scene which is just pure star wars nostalgia yeah yeah yeah. that's all it is so you go okay it's a member berry third act so you go okay well that one made money but again it was kind of like it didn't make as much money as Force Awakens, which is understandable, but it did all right. And you think, okay, you got two movies here. What's the what's Last Jedi? And then you do Last Jedi, and you completely cre- divide the fan base completely between the fanboys who still defend it yeah. because they're mindless, in my opinion, and the the rest of us who say, what? Why is why is Luke Skywalker on island drinking monster titty milk. What is going on here? And you go, and and that's that broke Star Wars. The Last Jedi yeah. absolutely broke Star Wars, and it hasn't yeah. recovered since. And they and then nothing else has been compelling as the MCU. Even the you, you can say even Thor: The Dark World and stuff like that. To I me, mean, it's like they're boring, but they at least moved this. There was something that they had in it that moved the story yeah. along, kept you going. Did, did, yeah. What is there in Star Wars that does that? Nothing. Nothing. Um, I saw a meme the other day, and it said <laughs> it had the armorer and Bo-Katan, and uh, the armorer says, um, "Do you respect my station? Then remove your helmet." And say, "Now remove your pants." Um, and I was thinking, <laughs> "No, this is this is a, this is the Star Wars I could get into." <laughs> Hashtag Star Wars Me Too. <laughs> But again, it's just like you say. There's just it at the moment. It is just content. It is just content. It is just we need filler, you know. Because like you say, if Kathleen Kennedy has been told to make some decent movies and stuff, it's kind of we need to keep the fans on our side and keep them subscribed every week to our Disney Plus. Otherwise, you know, we're we're going to be losing money and everything else. But they're losing money hand over fist. That's why they've just had to fire seven thousand people. Um, because of their losing money, and it's you know somewhere like you said, we said earlier, somewhere at some point in time, somebody has to go. This is not working. That target audience thing and everything else not working. You know, we just need to go back to just telling the stories. It's just well, oh, it's there was a guy that was there um, on the board. I forget his name. Um, I think we did a story on it, but the the exec that got fired. Um, he was he was with Nelson Peltz, right? Oh, okay. And, and uh, let me see if I can find it here real quick. Um, hello, search. I read a good one the but, other day. Just whilst you're finding that, I did find a good one the other day, and it said a chap on um, Twitter said the modern audience is the same as it's always been these people have been pandering to studios and trying to reach uh trying to studios are trying to reach don't watch movies or television uh they watch oh sorry right uh, these people are pan these people pandering to studios are, are the ones that, oh dear my brain today 
the people these pandering studios are trying to reach don't watch movies or television they watch tiktok and yeah. the new target audience doesn't exist checks the box office at the movies um i'd bring receipts bitch and this is exactly the point that these these people they're fighting and they're screaming and they're crying over the cause and everything else they're not interested in the property and ultimately these companies make money that is what they do and you know throughout the whole hollywood history and everything else movies yes you get the occasional piece of art out of it and everything else but these companies are about making money and at the moment they are pandering to a group of people who aren't giving them the money back and so that things have got to change you know that they, if they've, they've got to get bums on seats again in the cinema so you got david saslov at warner who is doing his best i think to try to stem that tide i think he's got a long ways to go the the fact that velma gets a second season is proof of that is that, uh, i'm genuinely sorry I, I didn't hear that is that real yeah it's real um then you've got paramount who is does have tom cruise making both mission impossible and he made top gun maverick and then you've got season three of picard so there's you know it's not going to be all one thing you know there's but you say okay paramount seems to be figuring things out and i've heard the guy that runs paramount plus say we're not going to do all this this woke stuff anymore but they give kurtzman another show <laughs> so you know you, you know, like you two steps forward one step back right then but then you got disney who is still all in and they fired ike perlmutter ike perlmutter neither discriminates nor cares about diversity he just cares about what he thinks will make money for disney they got rid of him he was with uh nelson peltz and and that takeover that lasted about 20 seconds and went nowhere but he he's he was on the side of trying to get pelts on the board and trying to get things going he was a voice of reason in disney at least in some respects and now he's mm. gone so <coughs> is disney still all in on this <coughs> apparently and yeah. i don't say you, kathleen kennedy's still there i look at what they're doing with star wars i don't see and and the mcu i'm not seeing anything really changing here i don't know i i i Disney has the biggest properties, almost all the biggest properties, and if they kind of ruin them, drive them into the ground. I sooner or later, something's got to give. I can't wait till the bubble bursts. You know, it's the only thing I just kind of look out for these days, and just hope that you know somewhere along the line the bubble just pops, and they they just suddenly realise what's going on and 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 knock it on the head. But it seems to be such a long way off. It does, and I don't know what they're going to do about it because it's. I, I mean, Disney's laying off people. He, they got a lot of money, I'm sure, tied up in the indie, and I'm sure it'll have a hundred million dollar opening weekend and then fall off a cliff, unless oh, okay. by some miracle it actually is good, which I don't see that happening. I, it, you know, I, I'm I'm so conflicted with indie because I just keep thinking to myself that maybe. They, the whole thing with Dimcock and everything else, maybe he has actually changed it and actually saved it, and they have gone back and done that. But other than that, I think Mango was ready to sell out because Kathleen Kennedy was in charge and everything else. And just, I, I'd like to say, I do not know what to expect come June. It's going to be nervously, I don't know. <laughs> it's just going to be weird. <laughs> maybe, maybe the first film I never get to watch. <laughs> Yeah, it's diff it's difficult to say what they're going to do here because, I mean, you can't just keep pouring money into these properties plus all the debt that you've incurred. You've got, yeah. you've got toys. You know, you got Ray action figures and and Poe action Rose, figures. And Rose, Rose, what's her name? Rose, Rose Tycho in that, yeah, yeah, and, and Finn, and they're just gathering dust on the on the on the shelves. Nothing's getting sold. Nobody cares. The the h hotel is in the red, like you wouldn't oh, believe. Yeah, Star Wars yeah. Galaxy Edge is not not in inspiring anybody. I don't know how well the regular Disney parks are doing or their cruise lines, but I mean they they build all this stuff on the backs of their properties. The stuff that gets you know, 
you, you do Frozen, and, and all of a sudden you've got a whole new cash cow because everybody loved Frozen, especially you know all the little girls love Frozen. Yeah. So now you got dolls and records and all kinds of stuff. You can put the the characters on your cruise ships and in in your Disney parks. It attracts people to come. Great. None of this is 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 working. And so if nobody's inspired, then all that other stuff starts losing money. How long can they keep going on like this? I don't know. But when you're firing guys like Perlmutter, it tells me that you haven't learned your lesson yet. Uh, it's, uh, like I say, the bubble has got to burst at some point in time. They cannot keep losing money like this, um, ultimately. And, and they know that the things are going wrong. And they they know, they, they think if they've got to see it. And then they, oh, it's just, like well, they say, do. it's weird. There's some that see it and they're cowards because they're too scared of their woke HR department or whoever is in there and they can't get rid of them because all the woke are disproportionately people of some sort of marginalized yeah. group, right? So if you get rid of all the woke, you get rid of all the marginalized group, and then they get accused of racism, sexism, homophobia, trans, blah, 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 blah. blah. And that, that's all the papers will will... And, and the news media will cover because they're co-opted and that's the only message they're putting out. So until, I mean, I really kind of put all of this on the news media, quite frankly. I mean, if you yeah. get the news oh, media yeah. start telling the truth again, then everybody else will start making decisions that will help. But as long as they will only put out the message that everybody white is bad and everything that they do that, that, that everything anybody marginalized does is perfect and awesome and everything else and the only reason you're you're not going is because you're racist then sooner or later you're right this bubble has got to pop because it's not you, true you kind of you again you kind of wonder what the whole end game is with the with this whole scenario you know what is there what is their end game to, to all of this just to sort of destroy humanity or something or you know and um, oh, take they, us back just, to the planet of the apes or <laughs> yeah they just don't have a very good grasp on reality they've got this i suppose but, oh, it's, well, i mean you you just say that it, it's in the same way that sort of we'd like politicians and, and with rich people you know when the, the pandemic was on and people were sort of just you know i'll just stay at home it's fine yeah, I haven't got a tennis court in my house, all right? You know, I haven't got a swimming pool in my house. Yeah. You know, just staying at home. You cannot relate to what it's like to just staying at home because you have no, you know, you have no no conception of reality with it. Well, it's a it's a child's they think like child's fantasy. I will give you an example. This is something I'm not very proud of, but when I was like 11 or 12, you know, I I fell in love with the Dragon's Lair game. And we had an old Pong game in our house, like a quarter game that my dad had bought uh, and put in bars. And then by the 80s, that was not going to make any money. So we just kept it in our basement. And I had myself absolutely firmly convinced that he was going to buy me a full-size Dragon Slayer game for Christmas. I had convinced myself. I don't know. You know, you look back at it. It's like, what are you, a retard? I was like, maybe. But... <laughs> Hey, I believed. Kids, I believed. I mean, kids can do that, right? You can you can convince yourself that something is going to happen, and then when it does it, you're absolutely crushed, and, and that's just called reality asserting itself. And that's just something kids do. It's part of growing up, right? You, yeah. You've probably had something. Everybody's probably had something like this. I hope it's not yeah, just me. Yeah. Uh, but when I look at these people, the way they act, it's like this, this, they never, they never had that moment of reality asserting itself. They've, for whatever reason, some people will say, oh, it's been bulldozer parents, or it's been everybody yeah. coddling them, or it's been participation trophies, or whatever buzzword the right likes to use to say, this is why everybody's stupid these days. But in, in essence, it's, it's this celebration of infantilization. We do not lionize the wise and the old we we cater to the young and the stupid and and because of that i you get people in there who are just emotionally incontinent they can't handle anything you you see them on tiktok just saying bizarre shit that has nothing to do with reality it's like at some point you would think reality would assert itself 
But I think, unfortunately, yeah. because we are so rich, like compared to any other time in the history of civilization, that we all our wants and needs and our dangers are are taking. We're the biggest problem we have is we're too fat. I mean, you in, don't in, have in the same, wild animals killing you. You know, I mean, it's it's yeah. But it's in the same respect. Problem. In the same respect, though, I mean, obviously it's different in this country. But I mean, that you know, my grandparents and everything else grew up during the war. You know, where yeah. there was that was proper oppression, that was proper suffering. Whereas yeah. nowadays it's suffering because I haven't got a million likes on you know TikTok and and nobody's paying attention to me and all this kind of stuff. And it's like seriously, you know, this is this is this is the world that we live in that these people are. Oh, it's just yeah. This generation uh, is getting worse my, and worse. Talk, TikTok and stuff like that is just getting worse and worse. With that, you know, it's, my it's internet goes it. down for five hours yesterday, and uh, you know, to be honest with you, we were like, okay, we'll just deal with it. You know, it's, yeah. it's just have something to eat, sleep a little bit. We just waited, but I, I have to think that there were some people in our neighborhood that broke out into hives. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> I said the other day actually that, um, oh, my internet went down for two hours. Oh, yeah, I only have to drink my own urine. Uh, you know, I was just so panicking. <laughs> um, what's that got to do with anything? I, uh, I went full uh, Howard Hughes, you know, the, the fingernails grew out that fast. Yeah, the beard, yeah, that's like, like, Kleenex boxes on my feet. <laughs> <laughs> it was bizarre. Um, I, 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 I mean, oh, go on. I, I'm just saying, I think that that's where these people are. They're in, they're in areas of power and responsibility they did not earn and they got it through whining and through yeah. tantrum throwing and with the threat of lawsuits or bad publicity and this is what they've wrought this is what we've gotten since Ghostbusters yeah. 2016 and again it's just what a, what a situation that we're in that <clears throat> you know sometimes it is perfectly acceptable to say no it is perfectly all right to not have the thing that you want. And, you know, you can't just then throw a tantrum like a child. You're supposed to grow out on, on that. It's, oh, it's ridiculous. I, I it's, really feel like these people are like Freddy uh, Krueger in the first Nightmare on Elm Street. It's like, just deny him. <laughs> and yeah. he fades away. I feel like that they have that little power if we would just not give it to them. But yeah. people are frightened. Thank you for watching this excerpt from Outpost Frequencies. Tune in live every Sunday at noon central time or 6 o'clock UK time. And also, remember to come to lastmovieoutpost.com for all your latest in movie news, streaming news, and everything cool about film. We are the cool news now. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next stream.